Welcome back to our series on Applied Regression Analysis. I'm Mark Ledbetter, and this is Lecture Video 10, and we're reviewing Basic Statistics Part 6. In this video, we're going to review how to calculate the confidence interval for the mean. Now, why would we calculate a confidence interval instead of just using X bar? Well, remember that X bar has a distribution, and the X bar is a continuous distribution. And so if we have mu here and then x bar here, then if we want to say that we want to know the probability that x bar is equal to mu, we have to have area. And the area of a line, this is just a single line, the width is 0, so 0 times the length gives you the area, and that is 0. So using x bar as an estimate really doesn't give us any probability. So we want to come up with a way where we have some confidence level or uh, a way of um, knowing how the probability that our value of mu is somewhere close to x bar and how, how big that, that uh, interval is. So we have to have an area to, um, in order to have probability. So we can draw this, and if this is x bar from the sample, then we want to have this the same distance on both sides of this, and understand that we have this range of values, and say x bar plus a, x bar minus a, x bar plus a. So we have this range of values, and we want to be confident, highly confident, that mu is, um, that that range contains mu. Okay. Have to be careful how we say this. So um, if sigma is known, then we use this formula. And this formula has z in it. If sigma is not known, then we're going to, and it has sigma. If we don't know sigma, we use this formula that has t in it and s, okay? And most of the time in real life, we don't know sigma, so we estimate it using s. And then that means that we use the t statistic, okay? I want you to remember that the standard deviation for the t, student's t distribution is bigger than the standard normal. That means because t values are always bigger than z values, the, the confidence interval using a t uh, estimate or t statistic is going to be larger than if we use the z, okay? So when we don't know the standard deviation, the confidence interval is bigger. When we do know the standard deviation, the con confidence uh, interval is smaller, which makes sense because if we have to estimate more things, we have to be more uncertain about the, the result or the answer. So we're having to estimate sigma, we have a bigger confidence interval. Okay, so a water taxi operator wants to know uh, the 95% confidence interval of the mean weight of 30 passengers. If a sample of uh, 30 passengers yields the following uh, results. So X bar is 170 and S, the sample standard deviation, is 16. So we don't know sigma, so we use the formula x bar plus or minus t alpha over 2 n minus 1 s over square root of n. Now, it turns out that our uh, t table in the book, this book, is different. So instead of giving us this area here, like alpha over 2, it's going to give us 1 minus alpha over 2 over here, okay? So we need to find, um, I'm going to find alpha over 2, and then it's going to be very easy to find 1 minus alpha over 2, right? So alpha is equal to 1 minus C, where C is equal to 95% in this case. That's my confidence level. C is my confidence level. And as a decimal, that's 0.95. 
So this is 1 minus 0.95, which is 0 0.05. And then alpha over 2 is half of that, 0 0.025. And so then 1 minus alpha over 2 is 0 0.975. So I come over to my t-table, and I look for 97.5. This is uh, 100 times p, sorry. This is 100 times p, so this is percentage, so 97.5. And n is 30, so n minus 1 is going to be 29. So I look down this row here until I get to 29, and I find 2.045. So x bar is 170. Whoops, I'm sorry. I forget to to choose my uh, pen, and then it makes it big instead of, zooms in instead of uh, writing. So 170 plus or minus 2.045 times s, which is 16, divided by the square root of n, which is 30, because we have 30 passengers. And this gives us 170 plus or minus 5.9738, and it keeps going. And then if I write this as a interval, and I'm going to use two decimal places, but technically we should um, probably use one. We're not told how many decimal places to use here. They don't give us any decimal places. So let's say that it's two. And that's going to give us 164.03 to 175.97. And since these are samples from uh, the same distribution, if we want it for 30, we multiply these numbers um, by 30. Okay? And then that would give us the confidence interval for that. And the reason that we would want to know it for that is that we want to know the we take this upper limit, multiply it by 30, we want to make sure that that number doesn't exceed the capacity for that water taxi. So this is a safety issue. And so if it doesn't, then we're 95% confident that the water taxi will not sink. Okay. So that was a quick review of how to calculate a confidence interval for the mean when we don't know the standard deviation, which is most of the time. So please don't forget to scan your lecture notes for this video by midnight on the date listed in the course calendar. Please be neat so that you can read it and study for your homework or use it to, for your homework and study for your test. Um, you're, you need to update your formula sheet with the formulas, the two formulas for con confidence intervals that you saw in here. If you have questions, come to my virtual office hours or email me. I will see you next time. Take care.